I despise about the idea of sleep. That sometimes it's just that. An idea. There are nights where it never comes to fruition. I want to sleep. I go to bed ready to fall into a restful sleep, but am met by tosses and turns instead. Sleep seems to be right at my fingertips, but I can't seem to get a good enough grip on it. Instead of sleeping, I'm being teased by an idea. It taunts me. So, on nights where sleep evades me, a couple of different things happen. If people's names come to mind, I pray for them. And sometimes I just pray for random people if no one specific comes to mind. Or maybe I will get up and read for hours. <laughs> then go back to bed and get taunted by sleep yet again. And since my brain does not have an off switch, I think a lot. Seriously, I get some of my best ideas while sleep evades me, which is a blessing and a curse. Something I did one night to help my brain relax was make a list. Things that need to be done within the next two days. I don't always make lists, but I did this night. I did not want what I had to take care of for those next two days to be running through my mind preventing me from sleeping. And they weren't. But other things were, obviously. One thing I like about lists is checking things off that have been completed. When we were preparing to move, I kept an inventory list of what was being packed. Each box was numbered with a specific sticky note. And each sticky note was a different color to represent a specific location. An orange sticky signified little bitch room. Then, on a notepad, I had each room on a separate page. And I would write down the sticky number and the contents of that box. Once all of our stuff arrived to our new home, <clears throat> which happened to be two weeks later, I was able to know when a room was complete by looking at the inventory list. Once a box was unpacked and its contents put away, I marked off the box from my list. And when all boxes were marked off, I wrote in huge letters, COMPLETE. It was quite rewarding, especially when I was able to write complete on my last page. I'm not a big list person, but when I make lists, I do them big. But not everything needs a list. There are things that would be a waste of time for me to create a list for, like cleaning the house. It would take me longer to make the list than it would be to clean. Well, that's only because I would be distracted by all the multiple colored pens. I'm sorry, I'm easily amused. I don't need a list for cooking. Every once in the blue moon, I might need a recipe, but for the most part, a list is not needed. Most importantly, my walk with God does not need a checklist. God doesn't have some big list for me to complete before he will give me the free gift of salvation. God did give the Ten Commandments, but he did not give them as a list to follow to earn salvation. I don't follow them to earn it. I follow them because I love God and want to do so. Jesus told us in Matthew 22, 36 to 40, that the greatest commandments were, one, to love God with all your heart, soul, and mind, and two, to love our neighbors as ourselves. If I love God, then I will follow the commandments, specifically the first four. If I love my neighbor, I will follow the commandments, specifically the last six. I love the hubs. He is my strength on a daily basis. Because I love him and have a relationship with him, I don't want to hurt him. I don't want to take anything that belongs to him, except for maybe a few bites off his plate. I don't want to put another man before him where I share the same thoughts I have towards my husband. I 
definitely don't want to take his life, which I'm pretty sure he's thankful for. I do my very best to always tell the truth. It is because of the love I have for the hubs that I don't do these things. It is also because of my love for God. It is because he loved me first that it is possible. The fact that we don't have this huge to-do list to earn salvation is apparent in Luke 3 when John the Baptist is baptizing people. A tax collector asked him, what should I do to be saved? He wasn't given this list of things to do to be saved. It was one simple thing. Don't take more than what is appointed for you to take. In other words, don't steal from those whom you are collecting taxes. Soldiers asked the same question. The response was simple. They were not to intimidate or falsely accuse anyone. Both the tax collectors and the soldiers asked simple questions. Both received simple answers. And it comes right back to love. Love for God and love for others. When we do these two things, the relationship that ensues is one where we don't want to hurt others. We don't want to lie or kill or steal. We don't want to put anyone before God or use his name in vain. I want the free gift of salvation, but I can't earn it by completing a checklist. I can make a choice to accept or reject it, but there is nothing I can do. Because I choose to accept it, I show my appreciation by loving God and others. I want my actions to show that I love God. I want my actions to show that I appreciate this free gift that no one else can offer. But this is possible only by God's amazing grace.